guys it's your girl natural please do me a favor and click that like and subscribe button click the bell so you always know when i post a video so i want to get on here today and talk to you about what i feel like is a very very toxic culture of basically stalking celebrities and this this idea that we own them we own them and we have the right to do all of this detective work just because they're in the public eye and how I feel like this is very detrimental towards people's mental health you know and I also feel like it's an invasion of privacy I just think that I think that and I got a lot of um well not a lot not a lot but I got some some people who were not so happy about the video that I did telling people who are diving so deeply into the Selena Gomez and Hailey Bieber uh, drama to to stop doing the, the detective work that that a lot of people well I won't say a lot of people a lot of people liked what I was saying but there was a small percentage of people who did not like that so much and um, I just want to get on here first of all to say that I'm not sending any hate you know towards people towards people I'm simply calling out what I think is problematic towards the behavior and you really have to separate the behavior from the people. So let me let me break this down a little bit more. And this video will still probably get dislikes. It'll still probably get trolling comments, you know, because that's just the world that we live in. People think that because they're behind a screen, they're behind a, a pictureless profile, they're behind a nameless profile, that they have the right to just say whatever they can say and fair do, okay? Fair do. But we also have the right to speak what we believe is right, what we believe are our opinions, as long as we aren't hurting anyone, we aren't breaking the law, we aren't committing any violence. You know, that's what democracy is. What I feel like, you know, I've done a little bit of research into this, and um, there were four particular instances that really, well, actually five, five that kind of stood out to me. And those instances were Hailey Bieber and Justin Bieber. I'm going to kind of put them together and I'll get to the point, you know, you'll kind of see where I'm going, going at in a bit. Um, Selena Gomez. Then there was um, Aaron Carter and Beyonce. So all of these people basically, uh, and, and Taylor Swift as well, I'm sorry. So all of these people have something in common. They have garnered a certain amount of publicity, but they've also had stalkers. So there was um, a crazy person who went on the stage while Beyonce was performing, and uh, he basically pulled her off of the stage, guys. He literally pulled this woman off of the stage. And Beyonce's response was so smooth. I think she said something like, thank you, I'm glad you're a fan, you know, or something like that, or thank you, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Um, T Swift had something similar. She had someone jumping up on the stage trying to grab her or kiss her or who, who knows, you know. Hailey Bieber and Justin Bieber, we see right now that there is an onslaught of information about them, of interpretations of what they're doing, what's what's wrong with their marriage, and that their marriage is doomed, that they're bad people, you know, because they hung out with this person, this Kardashian, they did that and they did this. And then Selena Gomez, I, I, Selena Gomez's fans sort of strike me like a little bit like Nick Carter's fans. They seem like, or, you know, in the videos where I talk about Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, sort of like the people who are defending the monarchy, the derangers in that sense, who, um, you know, they think because they're monarchist, they need to send all of this hate towards Harry and Meghan. Like that is their proof that they are in support of the monarchy. And I kind of see, I, I, I kind of feel like Selena Gomez and Nick Carter's fans kind of represent that concept, but it's not just them. It's, it's people who are fans of celebrities across the board, especially the, this Hollywood culture. Now I'm American, but I live in France. And I mentioned before in France, you know, celebrities can be celebrities, but they can still go for a night out without being, without having their privacy constantly, totally, you know, questioned. They can post stories or pictures on Instagram without, you know, thousands of people taking that and 
redistributing distributing it, uh, reinterpreting interpreting it, and and you know going through all of these cycles. We live in this age of where news, literally fake news, we see it becoming alive before our very eyes because it just has all of these variables of where A takes it and then B reconstructs it and, and then constructions it and then C takes it and then D. And then, you know, it's just on down the line from ABC to XYZ. You know, there's all these reinterpretations and you know, transformations of this information. And by the time it gets to the average person, it's just become a circus, you know, it's just become something totally different than what it was. Now, you know, like, I feel like Selena Gomez, Haley Bieber, and Justin Bieber, they, they have the unfortunate circumstance of kind of just always being in the public eye. And if you're in the public eye, you know, part of that comes with just, you know, having a lot of attention on you. And I get that. But the issue is that people, now that, that people really have this hands of information, the, the disposal of information at their hands, fake news can really become very prominent. It's very prominent in our society. And I'll give you a perfect example of that. Um, I saw a headline the other day that said Donald Trump was arrested in New York City. And I was just like, what? Donald Trump was arrested in New York City? I went and did a little bit of investigation on that. And it wasn't Donald Trump who was even arrested. It was someone who was working on his campaign. It was one of his advisors who was ad arrested. So that right there just shows you that what you talk about online, what you put out into, what you decide to put out into the world, it can have dire implications. And these are people, even though we see them, we see them on these little thumbnails on our screens, on our phones, on our iPads, on our Mac, on our computer, you know, whatever it might be, even though we see that and it's so easy for you to leave that comment, it's so easy for you to make that TikTok, sometimes just maybe step back, <laughs> maybe step back and think about the fact that this is a person, this is a real person. Now, I want to talk about Aaron Carter. Like, I'm going to do a video very soon on this because really my mind has just been kind of ex accepting that he's gone. You know, as someone, Aaron Carter was really a part of my childhood. Like, I remember watching him on Lizzie McGuire. I remember hearing his song in the Rugrats in Paris movie, you know, like Selena Gomez as well. You know, I, I remember Justin Bieber too. I remember seeing these people throughout my childhood. And so I get the fact that you can have a deep connection with these people. Maybe they help you through some adversities in your childhood. Maybe you feel really close to them. But guys, you know, to take something and to be constantly questioning someone's marriage, questioning someone's sanity, questioning every move that someone makes, I think that Aaron Carter is a perfect example of that. I feel like maybe, just maybe, if Aaron Carter had not had experienced the level of just constant onslaught of comparing him to his brother, of criticizing his behavior, of sort of dismissing his struggle with drugs and mental health you know if he would have experienced more support on that I have to question if maybe he would be here today you know and then I look at the history of Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez and clearly they both experienced you know the the adversities that come with growing up in the limelight they experience just the the adversities of of drug use and mental health and I feel like instead of supporting these people instead of saying I know what you're going through because I know a lot of people can talk about mental health since COVID at the very least we know that mental health is a thing <laughs> it's a thing guys but to be constantly co questioning someone their marriage and you don't really know these people yes you see them at press conferences you see them on the red carpet you see them on TMZ, you see them on social media, yes, but you don't know these people. The, the, you don't know them. They aren't yours. They aren't yours. You know, the, I feel like this is really a, a question of control and power. 
You know, it's like, they're my celebrities. And so I, I just, I, I feel like it's really sad that Selena Gomez has to come out and make a statement to her fans to say, don't send hate to Hailey Bieber. Don't send hate to Justin Bieber. Selena Gomez is such a sweetheart. She's got such a sweet nature. Um, and still people go after Hailey Bieber and Justin Bieber. It's like, that's not the way that you defend someone that you love, you know? If you look at the at the life of Jesus Christ, you know, right now we are in Lent, you know, at least for the other Catholics out there, we're in the, the um, period of Lent where it's time for us to reflect on how much smaller we are than the almighty power. The almighty power is the one that has the final judgment. We don't have the judgment. And so we don't have the authority to look into someone's marriage, to look into someone's life and, 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 and assume what's going on there. So that's basically what I meant to say and stop doing the detective work. I didn't want to um, vilify anyone for, you know, the part, like they, them as a person. I don't want to vilify anyone as a person. It's just the behavior, you know, let these celebrities, you know, don't worship them. Like, Give them your love, give them your attention, give them your support, but, you know, don't try to dip into their personal life and make all of these assumptions because clearly we don't have 100% of the story. And I just recently found out that um, Justin Bieber's going through some health issues. And so all, through all this, do you not think that it's just another level of stress for him? People are saying, oh, why don't you come out and speak for your wife? Why don't you come out and defend your wife, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Guys, you don't, you, don't, you don't have the right to be peeking into someone's marriage, not unless they invite you to do that. Now, if you're with a friend, a close friend, and they say, I'm having some problems in my marriage, like I just need someone to talk to, I can see that. that that's where you have the invitation to really speak on a subject. But if you don't really have that invitation, it's not really your business. And, and you have to look at the implications of this. Look at Aaron Carter, look at someone who dealt with trauma, who dealt with mental health, who, helped, who dealt with drug issues. I don't think that Justin Bieber is at, in, as, in as difficult of a situation, as dire of a situation as, as Aaron Carter was, but maybe he could be, and maybe, the constant prodding, the constant discussion and rhetoric around his life from people who don't know him, maybe that could also be a part of what pushes them, you know, towards something really, really not good. And we know that stress and anxiety, it manifests itself in, um, in health implications. And even looking at, you know, Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez as they had, uh, you know, this, this young rebellion where they were experimenting with drugs, where they were experiencing mental health decline, et cetera, et cetera. I look at that and I even think that that could also be um, a consequence of living in the public eye and having this idea where people feel like they really just control you. We've got to stop this, guys. We've got to stop this culture within, you know, following Hollywood celebrity, following Hollywood gossip, you know, news, and just always feeling like everyone has the right to comment on something. Now, I don't want to silence people. We definitely should be able to comment on things, but let people speak in their own words when they need you, when they need your support, and then come forward with it. But, you know, if you're just kind of going long wolf and, and you're doing all this detective work, it can really be, I think, detrimental towards people's health. And, I don't want to cast a stone on anyone because myself, I comment on celebrities, but I also comment on my life. I comment on my life experiences. And when I do comment on celebrities, it's based upon what they have put out. I try not to speculate too much. And I think that's what this comes down to. You know, are, are we really just speculating or do we really know the truth? You know, these pictures from, from Justin Bieber's birthday. Oh, he had his eyes open while he was kissing Hailey Bieber and he wasn't smiling in his pictures with her. Well, first of all, he's got face paralysis because he's dealing with some health issues. Second of all, that's his marriage. That is his marriage. Until you see a video where Hailey Bieber comes out and says, 
guys, I'm having problems in my marriage. Will you please tell me what your thoughts are? <laughs> Until you see that, it's really, it's not your place. It's not your place to really comment on that. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to do a video very soon about um, Aaron Carter, but I, I'm, I'm still processing. And that'll be much more structured than this. This is really just a rant almost. But um, yeah, just looking at his mom. His, his mom, what she's going through. I, I read a comment because she, she released some photos of his, his the crime scene of, of his death. And I read a comment from one commenter. They said, oh, I think she's literally just going through the, this phase of grief called blame and she needs to blame someone. And to look at that, to look at that, you know, we watched someone for a decade demise. We watched their mental health decline you know, and I feel like we as society need to take a little bit of responsibility for that. We were a little bit of part of that, you know, and so this is really just public a service announcement, guys, you know, celebrities may seem superhuman, they may seem like they can deal with anything and everything that comes their way. Um, but it's not always the case. It's not always the case. Like, it's not the case. They're human, you know, and they have feelings too. And I think we need to be a little bit more sensitive to that. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you so much for being here again. Please do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button. Go ahead and click the bell so you know whenever I post a video and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.